Hello, welcome back to more Monster Prom. So our last two, um... Sessions went alright, I think. Let's do this! So hopefully... Hopefully the luck continues. Which inanimate object do you think would make the best girlfriend or boyfriend, provided you went criminally insane? A dildo. Duh. A human-sized pillow depicting a character created by myself. As a matter of fact, I have all the needed paperwork. I'm only waiting for the con for the conservative, narrow-minded laws of our country to finally step forward into waifu and husbando territory, as was clearly intended by God. An ATM. Sugar baby life, here I come. <laughs> you build a 100 foot statue commemorating an event so that 100 years or 1000 years in our in 1000 years archaeologists can learn something about the people of our time what does the statue represent your least favorite political figure being devoured by rabid rhinoceri which are also covered in badass tattoos the mind-blowing twist of your favorite TV show that clearly changed the life of everyone forever, unlike all that boring stuff they show on the news. Or that glorious instant when your friends stopped you from texting embarrassing stuff to your ex while hella drunk. Okay, last time it went creative. Hmm, so I'm thinking... Is it, is it going to be one of these two? Oh, no, that was the creative option. Crap. If you were an ice cream, which flavor would you be? Success? Ikasumi? Plutonium? Double creme de la Grimoire and meringues? Meat? Tequila and Coke? <laughs> If you were a product, what would be your slogan? Extra flammable. I command you to enjoy me. Objectively better than the other options. Too expensive for you. You won't understand me, and that's how you know I'm cool. For fans, by fans. Liam and Scott having a discussion. Scott looks confused and Liam looks bored, which means they're probably having an argument. Look, not that I care, but aspiring to be a professional sports star is both impractical and passe. Hmm. Wait, don't you don't care, but you walked all the way over here just to tell me that. Plus, don't you want to be like a professional magnetic ibuprofen? Me medic influencer, try to keep up. But how does a... Uh, how does one of those guys earn money? Mimetic influencers don't earn money, Scott. We earn cultural capital. Oh, okay. How much cultural capital does a sandwich cost? I can see I'm not getting through to you. Hey, you. Could you explain to this cream why my career path is objectively the best? Yeah, could you also explain what a cretin is? He means he wants to be an artist, and artists are important. Who do you think designs all those sports jerseys? 
Actually, I think sports is the best career. I mean, how far can a mimetic influencer throw a football, huh? Hmm. I think this is... If it's like the others that we just did, it's going to decide whether... If we're going to go Liam or Scott's path. Hmm. I think we'll try Scott. Not very far. Hmm. Wait, wait, wait. So you can't throw a football very far and you don't make money? Those are the two things that are best in life. No, Scott, what's best in life is nothing. Life is an endless void of hypocrisy and bad remixes of your favorite songs. But I will admit that by your metrics, my career of choice is technically inferior. Not bad. I suppose we'll just have to agree to disagree. Awesome, bro. Great, I love agree. Scott trots off happily, unaware of the existential price he caused for Liam. We gain plus two charm and plus one creativity. Let's do this! You find Liam taking a picture of his food, and Scott taking a picture of also Liam's food. <laughs> yes, Scott, snap away. My artistic plating is too magnificent to ignore. Uh, uh, uh. Artistic what? I'm playing Pokemans Go! The mobile version of the hit Pocket Humans video game. What do Pocket Mans have to do with my food pick? There's a level 33 Bernard Hudson hanging out in the middle of your plate. Here, take a look. Scott, why does your phone show a tiny human doing pottery on top of my eggplant ravioli? I mean, you don't know Bernard Henson? He used to be a chartered accountant, but now he's decided to pursue his dream of being a world-famous potter. That major life change has made him super rare. Pocket humans almost never follow their dreams. I don't care how rare he is, his presence is spoiling my pristine food pick. Spoiling it, but pocket humans are way cooler than a boring old food pick. You take that back. Uh-oh, tempers are running a little high. Looks like it's up to you to settle this dispute. Scott's right, why take a normal cliche food pick when you can take a food pick of Scott capturing a Pokemon off your food pick? Scott, look over there. There's a Stuart Hogarth on top of that pile of mashed potatoes. Good lord, you're right. The layers of irony are practically infinite. Go ahead, Scott. Capture your Pokemon. Okay, here I go. Wait, what are you doing? Stop molesting my pasta. Ew. I'm not trying to grab your pasta, bro. I'm trying to grab Bernard Henson, but he's too slippery. Oh, jeez. And this, this isn't, this still isn't too long after we came off a conversation previously about, about everyone having sex with pasta. You imbecile, Bernard Henson isn't actually on top of my ravioli. He's an image projected by your phone. Are you sure? He seems so real. Let me just try to grab him a few more times. No, my artfully arranged pasta pockets are in disarray. You fiend. Liam chases you and Scott away so he can rebuild his artful pasta arrangement. You bond with Scott by teaching him how to actually play Pokemans Go. <laughs> Let's do this! That day goes dur that day goes during recess. You start a half hour raid that goes full crazy. Attracts 300 people, summons demons from a nightmare dimension. You gain plus two fun. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot Scott and Miranda staring intently at a picture of a seahorse. <laughs> this looks like a killer seahorse, Mary. What are you so worried about? Well, you see, one of my daddy's subjects gave me this horse as a gift. And well, you've heard what they say, haven't you? <laughs> Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, what? What? Who are they? Why do they say that? What's in there? I don't know. That's why I'm so distraught. I'm terrified that I will actually look into this gift horse's mouth and see... See what? A gross butt? Another tinier horse? 
A world without sports? Yuck! I don't know, and I don't want to find out. Oh, come on, Mary, you gotta find out. You gotta find out for... What's that thing Miss Faradu's always talking about? Science? Yeah, for science! You got it, right? You realize Scott's looking to you for your opinion. They both are. What do you think Miranda should do? Don't you ever look... Don't you ever look that gift horse in the mouth. In fact, breed it with sea urchins to produce gift horses with tiny mouths. Look that gift horse right in its damn mouth. They only say not, not to because they don't want you finding all the delicious mouth candy. <laughs> Miranda's clearly pleased by her suggestion. When you run to her the next day, all her previous anxiety seems to have gone. Okay, so that choice was based on my smarts. I'm guessing the other one was boldness. Or perhaps creativity. I'm not sure, but... I think which is the best... I think that which is the best choice is reliant on... On which stat is higher. My knight in shiny armor! I took your marvelous suggestion to the logical next level. I had my father's genetic wizards combine my gift horse with a sea urchin. Whatever horrible thing was lurking between those horse lips, they are now far too tiny for me to see it. The horse is a little bit spiny now, but I think that just adds to his charm. Da, 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 da. It's so cute, I can tell he loves it because of the deeply pained expression in his tiny watery eyes. Oh dear. That works so well. That works so well, you wonder why you don't solve all your problems with genetic manipulation. You gain plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Let's do this! That day, you spent some time on the library's PCs, mining some bitcoins. This is supposed to have something to do with solving algorithms, algorithms, and the rise of cryptocurrency. But you guessed that it actually that nobody has any fucking idea how it really works. Anyway, you gain plus two bitcoins, which is equal to two million dollars, which is unfortunately is equal to two monster dollars. So plus two money. Scott and Miranda seem to be arguing about something. Your sweet meditation skills are clearly needed. Or mediation, not meditation. No, I know our football team is called the Spooky High Spooky Monsters Who Spook, but who also play sports, but who's our mascot? Our mascot? Oh dang, you're right, we don't have one. Oh, what about Misha the Mermaid? Mermaids are monsters. No way, too girly. Try this, Wally the Werewolf. Um, not old school mermaid, Scott. Those things were legit horrifying. <laughs> Why's it gotta be a werewolf? We're the monsters, not the werewolves. Hmm. Ah, well, we're not the mermaids either. Hmm. Maybe the problem is that the team is trying to cover a huge, diverse group of people with a single label. No, Coach is never wrong. We're just not thinking hard enough. Think, think, think. Hey, bro. Hey you, you look like a hard thinker. Which mascot should we use for our team? Easy, we'll just genetically engineer a cross between every kind of monster at the school. Head of a werewolf, tail of a mermaid, hair of a medusa, angst of a vampire, we'll call it Abe the Abomination. Or just find a regular human, dress him in a business suit, and make him the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Corporate greed, that's the real monster. Finally, an idea that represents the true diversity of our school. We can use Daddy's Gene Lab. Let's see. In order to fit all the monster parts in, the mascot will have to be about 100 feet tall. Da, 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 da. Covered in nightmarish appendages and moist tentacles. Huzzah! 
which means it shall provide great shade on hot game days. The tentacles can hold umbrellas. Huzzah! Yeah, because deadly genetic experiments are always a shortcut to a girl's heart. You get plus two smarts and plus one boldness. And um, my affection with, with Miranda seems to actually be what's going up a lot here. Let's do this! Wonder if I should be trying for her instead. Or sh should I continue with Scott's path? Decisions, decisions. I think I'll continue with Scott for now. You find Scott and Damien shoveling hot dogs and mashed potatoes in their mouths while Coach cheers them on. Always believe in yourself. Go, boys, go! Munch your way to victory! Ah, there's no dirt sport than an eating contest. Dead Coach! So the lemonade! Looks like it's a pretty fair fight so far, but where's the fun in that? Time to step in and tip the balance. Distract, distract Scott with surprise fireworks. Slather Damien's dogs in holy ketchup. You pull out your bottle of Brother Caliente's Father's Son and the Father's Son and the Holy Ghost pepper ketchup and dump it on Damien's dogs. Yeah, finally a sauce hot enough for... Oh, fuck, my soul is melting! Always embrace youth! Power through, Jamie, and the heat you're feeling is just the fires of determination! No fire I can handle! No fire I can handle! This ketchup is fucking consecrated! I'm having an allergic reaction! <laughs> allergic reactions are just weakness leaving the body, Jamie, and keep it up! I'm out! I'm pretty sure that's wrong and dangerous advice, Coach. I quit. Good job! Well, I guess I make Scott the winner. Congratulations, Scott! Hooray! I love winning! Yeah! Great, hooray! Now will someone take me to the nurse's office? Hooray, I love helping! Scott rushes off, carrying Damien's smoking body, and you rush just a little closer to Scott's heart. <laughs> oh boy. You bitch, why are you always at the spot I'm trying to level up? Well, well let me go for... That day you skip class and hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. Some people want to watch the world burn. Zero shits, but plus two boldness. You're washing your hands and you can't help but overhear Zoe, Miranda, and Polly chatting in one of the stalls. <laughs> oh my god, yes! Derek the wear slug is dick! I put him in one of my fanfics and there was more than a little author authorial insertion, if you know what I mean. Derek is, as you say, thick, but my more refined taste predisposed me towards Chelsea the Dapper Succubus. Everybody wants to hump Chelsea. She's a succubus. That's how it works. You want to know who I like? Mm -hmm. Who do you like, Polly? Yeah, who? Tell us. Mm -hmm. You know that desk in Mr. Fishman's chemistry classroom? The one in the third row, second from the left? Probably. What about it? <laughs> I am thirsty for that desk. Check it out next time you get class in there. Tell me you wouldn't want to fling it around the room in a fit of ghostly rage. <laughs> Polly's got a point. That desk is pretty dull. It does have a certain refined quality, because the legs are made of metal, and metal is literally refined. Ah yes, desk fuckers unite! Desk fuckers? But they're supposed to be you fuckers! You gotta concoct a scheme to get yourself to the top of their fuck it lists. <laughs> fuck it list, good one. Hire a hitman to kill every other crush they just mentioned, leaving yourself as the only viable alternative. Or pit yourself against those other punks in an online poll. Prove your objective superiority. Hmm. Oh, I needed 
Oh, I, that was money. Shit. You scrape together what little cash you have, convert it to Bitcoin, and use it to hire someone on the Assassins for Hire subreddit. Your dastardly plan in motion. You return to the bathrooms that night to eavesdrop on the results. I can't believe Luscious Derek is dead. Cut down the prime of his life. Now I'll have to track down his tormented spirit and try to make out with that. Oh, poor Chelsea, too. I have no choice but to command one of my servants to dress up as her and practice kissing me. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. You know, they caught the murderer, though, right? What? Yeah, apparently he was some kind of bargain basement online monster hunter. They found him in Mr. Fishman's classroom and paled through the heart by the leg of... Our most beloved desk? <laughs> ah, yes. Just wish that desk would impale me if you know what I mean. Curses! Thanks to your discount hitman, that stupid... That stupid desk chair combo is more popular and sexy than ever. Shit. Well, we need... Spent half hour raid that goes full crazy. Tim won the small magical Latino cat. You know which one? The one involved in the beehive, the bloke doll, the president, the penguin mask, and the mystery of the Goblin King. Slowly lots of people start joining you to hear the story, but by the time you say where the Goblin King was, a hundred people are so burst into hysterical laughter. You turn on mobile app that captures all the laughter and turns it into plus two fun. So you wander around talking to yourself like a weirdo. You notice Miranda walking around talking to herself like a weirdo. She seems to be addressing an imaginary crowd. Huh, am, am I on Miranda's path now? It's, that's what it's looking like. Greetings, fellow classmate. Oh, hello. I was just practicing my royal way for when I am crime prom queen. I feel there is a lot to be learned before I ascend the throne. Na, 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 na. Naturally, as a princess, I am already great at wearing crowns, talking to cute animal friends, quelling rebellious through rebellions through excessive force, and singing sweetly. But I lack administrative experience. I have never so much as issued a decree. I wonder what my first should be. You don't have the heart to tell her that the role of prom queen doesn't come with sovereignty. Maybe you should just give her some suggestions instead. Taxes are fun. Or paint every student pink. Ah yes, paint, the great equalizer. How much more docile, more uniform, more color coordinated they will be. Of course, I suppose people do have other distinguishing features that paint wouldn't take care of. Some have fangs, for example, but that's an easy fix. We issue prosthetic fangs for everyone. <laughs> or even easier, simply remove the fangs of anyone who has them. Yes, that's a good starting place. We shall go from there. Everyone will be so pretty. Um, you may have planted the seeds for a rather unsavory political regime. But Miranda is excited about it, so yay? Sorry, fellow students. As long as I get laid by her, that's what matters. Let's do this. Hmm. Again, though, I was. Miranda was one I was saving for later. I kind of want to hold off for now and keep and keep going with Scott's route. Looks like Scott and Zoe are having marshmallows for lunch. You say that because their cafeteria table is covered in a literal mountain of marshmallows. Zoe slams a marshmallow into her mouth. It's mildly impressive. <laughs> That's 15 marshmallows. Scott stuffs six marshmallows into his mouth at once. It's slightly more impressive. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I'm a... Three. I'm king of the mall. Uh, I don't want to have to do this, but you leave me no choice, rival. Zoe begins to glow purple and convulse. Her tentacles swell. You smell death itself. Ancient chaos, doomed to worlds. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. A cloud of marshmallows rise up into the air, and Zoe's countless mouths all open with infinite hunger. 
all the mallows fly into Zoe's gaping maws. The cafeteria windows open as all marshmallows in a 50 mile radius are summoned to their doom. It's unspeakably impressive. Damn. Yes, let's... Zoe is someone we do- we definitely do not want to piss off. Hey, no fair! If I count correctly, I've now eaten 13,666 marshmallows exactly, which means I win. Ah, cool. Can't use more than one mouth during an eating contest, it's cheating! And I would know, because I used my hands at soccer one time and still feel bad about it. No, wait, I didn't cheat! The validity of this impromptu marshmallow match is my whole reason to live! And my whole reason to not destroy this amazing marshmallow-filled planet. Quick, referee this athletic dispute before the whole planet's destroyed. We can't control how many mouths we have. That's not nice. Scott, are you a good boy or not? Scott, play smart and be creative. Don't you have any other holes you could use to win? Oh, no! Oh, my goodness. Uh, um, uh... Other holes? Scott scratches his head and finds his ear. Based on his reaction, this might be the first time he's noticed he has ears. Ah! Oh, I found another hole already! I'm back in the game! And there's two more holes on my face I wasn't even using! Scott stuffs every single orifice with marshmallows, and it's definitely hot. <laughs> cool, you found a fun new fetish to enjoy! <laughs> Curse you, rival! Your whole jutsu is just too strong for me! I lose! Scott's mouth, ears, and nose are full of marshmallows. Even though he can't speak, hear, or breathe, you can tell he's overjoyed about winning. Oh dear. What have we done? Let's do this! Well, at one point you're about to be eliminated by a player from the other team. But suddenly you convince him not to throw the ball at you with a heartfelt speech about the importance of everyone's lives. Take advantage of the moment of weakness. You lose five mercy, but you gain plus two charm. You're minding your own business when Miranda comes rushing up to you, clearly distraught. We're still on Miranda's route! I've been... I, I might have wasted too much time with Scott now, though. Most terrible news, friend. I have just watched the documentary Game of Thrones, and now I fear for my own royal family. She thinks it's a documentary! <laughs> I did not realize how susceptible we might be to random acts of treachery, or how often we romance our siblings. <laughs> I don't want to be shot in the chest by a crossbow while sitting on the toilet. That doesn't sound proper at all. Please, help... Help me put my poor mind at ease. How can I possibly identify potential traitors in my court? Just keep, keep an eye out for the classic signs. Shifty eyes, hooded black cloaks, ordering knives in bulk. Pretty much everybody's a traitor. Just spin a bottle and whoever it points at, kill them. This one sounds like it's more on smarts, so... But that would mean... <gasps> Disgraceful! Could Lord Darkheart Stabbington be a traitor? <laughs> I must warn Father at once. We have to find a new royal babysitter. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Unless that name is Darkheart Stabbington. We gain plus two smarts and plus one money. Shit, see, now I'm worried. I'm worried that from now on, any any more time I spend with Miranda might already be too late. That day you spend some time on the library's PC, sending malicious spam emails in the hopes of stealing other people's money. It doesn't sound very nice, but who's really the one to blame if they respond to such a blatant scam? You lose 10 karma, which isn't a stat in this game, so who cares? And you gain plus 2 money. You notice Polly bent over her phone while Miranda tries to peek over her shoulder. 
Something really interesting must be going on Polly's phone. When you get closer, though, you see Polly's just on Tinder again, swiping right on everybody. Miranda seems entranced, though, and a little worried. What? What did you say this was called again? Tinder. <laughs> and it is an app for finding true love? Um... <laughs> sure. Oh, how but majestic. I never knew. I have spent countless hours going to royal balls and kissing frogs and pretending to be in a magical slumber. <laughs> when I could it simply have been using this app? I mostly just use it for collecting dick pics. <laughs> oh, that's our Polly. What are these dick pics? Tokens of affection? Oh, at last, to be so far behind in my quest for love. I'm 19 years old, practically an old maid, and now only learning of this. Oh, how will I ever make up for lost time? I'll coach you in the mysterious ways of Tinder. You'll have a whole harem in no time. That might be charm. You still don't have Tinder? Why should you worry having Tinder when you can actually own Tinder? Why don't you just buy the entire company? <laughs> ah, yes, of course! I will simply purchase the app and require all of its most attractive and heroic users to date me. It is exactly how my father met my mother, except with the Indian Ocean instead of Tinder. Holly, I'll give you $230 million for Tinder. I mean, okay, but, like, I don't actually own the company. What do you mean? I thought you said you had Tinder. <laughs> yeah, on my phone. I have a copy of the app. I don't own any successful internet startups. Oh, yes, I had forgotten you were poor. I am so sorry. Ouch. It's cool. I must depart. Well, anyway, I am off to buy Tinder now. Goodbye. Have fun. Now might be a good time to uninstall Tinder from your phone. Meanwhile, we get plus two creativity and plus one smarts. Let's do this! Well, okay, I, I guess we're on Miranda's route. Um, I just hope it's not too late to... Too late to get in her pants. You come upon Damien sneering at Miranda's elaborate silverware spread while her eating serves. Chow down obediently at a neighboring table. I still don't get why you collect all these stupid forks and spoons and shit. What a noob. I mean, even the knives don't really look that deadly. Silly boy, this silverware is not for killing. Things can be for stuff other than killing? That's lame as hell. It's basically useless. I mean, you don't even eat. Your serfs do it for you. Well, of course they do. But they're not using any of your silverware. Naturally, they aren't. Serfs must eat with their hands, as befits the lower classes. So you're saying this silverware collection has no practical purpose? Things have practical purposes. These two could go round and round like this forever, unless you say something to resolve the dispute. Damien's right, Mary. Maybe it is time you started murdering people with your silverware. Lay off Miranda, what about your collection of exotic corpses? <laughs> That's different, those corpses are useful. Useful for what? For, for holding down important documents. What important documents? Documents about very important, uh, fine. I guess I don't use the stupid corpses for anything, I just stack them in a shed and occasionally dress them up in silly costumes. There, are you happy? Extremely. Whatever, I'm gonna go play with my corpses. <laughs> you stay behind with Miranda to admire her collection. She even teaches you how to use the romance fork. Smooth. Let's do this! Match is so intense and both teams are so into it that you decide to raise the stakes by betting part of your charm against part of the other team leader's charm. Your spirit is fueled by determination. Finally, you win and take two charm from the other team's leader. She's now a bit less fabulous. 
You're gazing dreamily at Miranda when a flash of otherworldly light blinds you. When your vision clears, you see a great rift has opened in time and space, and standing in the middle of it... my love. Oh, not you again! Stop cock-blocking me! It's me, Prince of the Otherworld, and I'm here to fulfill an ancient prophecy. How majestic. A prophecy? How exciting and regal. What sort of prophecy is it? It is a prophecy of love. Oh boy, here it comes. Legends foretell a great beauty with the hair of an angel and the scales of a fish. A beauty who I'm destined to marry. <gasps> but that sounds like a perfect description of me. Could it be that I am the great beauty described in the prophecy? Well, yes, that's sort of what I was trying to imply. Now come with me to my realm, where we may plan a magnificent wedding. I can't let him get away with this, but that prophecy's hard to argue with. The only argument you can think of is... Hair of an angel? Ha! Clearly Miranda has the hair of a goddess. What about those fish scales I glued to this handful of angel hair pasta? Hair of a goddess, that sounds like charm. What about fish scales I glued to this handle full of angel hair pasta? That's That sounds like either creativity or charm. Or creativity or fun. If it's creativity... Hmm. Why that, that technically fulfills the prophecy. I'm sorry, my beloved, but my hands are bound by the ties of fate. The prince sadly retreats to his realm to marry a handful of fishy pasta. You're prepared to apologize to Miranda, but she doesn't look too put out. My knight in shiny armor. Actually, I am fine. Today you, you saved me from a terrible fate. I suspect that any man willing to marry a handful of cold, scaly pasta is not likely to be good husband material. Probably not even if he was a prince. You have a lot of pasta left over from your clever trick. You share it with Miranda and all your friends. Gain plus two smarts and one creativity. Probably gonna want me to have money too. That day you spend some time in the library's PCs, managing your star ticker. <laughs> I see what you did there. You deceived lots of people with a sensationalist video and impossible promises. Nice. You gain 100,000 money, but almost everything goes to cover costs, and you keep only two money. You see Miranda, Vera, and Polly gathered around a table covered in books. Could they be studying? No way. I hereby call this meeting of the boss-ass bitches to order. I've gathered all prior school yearbooks so we can have a clear list of everyone we're better than. Always the same with uh. you. Wow, what a great use of your time. Who said that? Oh great, it's the coven. What are you three doing here? Um, studying, because this is a library at a school. Spies! Villains impersonating us! What? What? Don't you see, Vera? Those are obviously our evil twins! The one in the mi the middle one is mean and bossy like you! What are you talking about, Polly? We go to class with you. You would know if you three didn't spend your time doing something stupid and mostly illegal stuff. I won't fall for your tricks, evil Vera! Are you implying the original Vera isn't some kind of evil herself? And look, Vera, the one on the right has glasses, just like Polly. I need these to see. And she, see, she has dark skin. She's obviously dark Polly. Whoa, Polly, just no. <laughs> oh my goodness, bitches is only one letter away from witches. Good lord. Say, would you three mind studying somewhere else? You're upsetting my minions. Never! Good grades are the backbone of a bright future. We need all this knowledge to save the world from the big bad. 
Oh boy, if you don't figure out a way to get the coven out of here, you might have to break up a brawl. Any ideas? Oh, what? Whip out your rooster. Witches hate roosters. Chop up all the study tables with a big axe. Ah, no! Get that filthy cock away from us! <laughs> Good thinking. Witches are repelled by the rooster as a symbol of the dawn. No, roosters are just mean, and we don't want to catch any diseases. Fine, we're leaving. It's even more proof that there are evil twins. See, I love cocks and pussies. I, too, love animals. As we say in my kingdom, the chicken is the tuna of the land. All right, they're gone. You can put your cock away. Aw, so soon, ladies. Though you did use them quite skillfully. Well... Vera's so impressed, she lets you sit up in the first meeting of the boss-ass bitches. You all threw sh so much shade, your rooster decides it's nighttime and goes to sleep. Oh. You gain plus two fun and plus one boldness. Let's do this! I'm actually wondering if I should focus on only one or two stats rather than trying to trying to build them all up at once you arrive at your chosen table to find that miranda has locked one of her eating serfs in an iron maiden you're unfazed but calculester is very phased friend miranda isn't locking your unpaid intern in a spike filled sarcophagus unethical 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 adjective inconsistent with rules and standards of ethics ethics. Oh, you mean those things poor people have instead of royal titles. But I thought that ethics were a critical part of being a good organic creature. That's a common misconception. The key to being good is having a lot of money and punishing anyone who dares disrespect you. For example, this saucy surf dared to put ketchup on the hot dog she was eating on my behalf. Yeah, ketchup's nasty. That, yeah, yeah, put, put, her, put her in the Iron Maiden. For de desecrating food with ketchup. Ugh. If I were the sort of person to put ketchup on a hot dog, 48 hours and the Iron Maiden should teach her. At a girl. Error! Error! Warning! Friend statements are inconsistent with internal moral compass. Existential crisis imminent. Uh oh. Quick, set Miranda straight, or set Calculester crooked. What's this, Calculester? Disagreeing with Miranda? Looks like it's disrespectful prison time for someone else, too. <laughs> Let's punish your surf in a different way, say by giving her a frowny face sticker with a really ag with really aggressive glitter. Nah. My knight in shiny armor. Right you are. Luckily, I always keep this second Iron Maiden on hand for emergencies. An Iron Maiden is an ineffective form of punishment for me, for me as I am made of steel and do not require sleep or freedom. However, I understand that punishing me is important to you, and so I will accept uh, attempt to appear upset. Engage lamentation. <laughs> oh, no, please, I am punished. That's more like it. Maybe you'll think twice before disagreeing with me in the future. I think trillions of times per second, but for the sake of simplicity, yes, I agree to think at least twice. Calculester remains in the Iron Maiden for the rest of lunch. He doesn't seem to mind. And you get some alone time with Miranda. Nice. Let's do this. That day while rehearsing for the class play, it's as though the muses themselves have descended to give you... Okay, okay we got this, this spiel again. Ah, the magic of the theater. Nothing beats this particular brand of insanity of an amateur production starring non-actors. You notice Miranda staring in with admiration at Polly's costume. Such detail, such sparkle. What do the potions do? 
They're just props, Mary. I think they're filled with colored water. Oh. No, knowing Polly, I thought they'd be filled with booze. But imagine if they weren't. What wonderful things one could conjure up. A potion to attract princes. A potion to repel jerks. A potion to enhance beauty. A potion to repel jerks. Now you realize spending the last term doodling of cool potion ideas in your notebook wasn't useless after all. You picked the coolest potion idea in your notebook to impress them. A potion that transports the drinker deep into outer space to explore the vastness of the universe. A potion that gives Manny's flavor to whatever you put it on. Hmm. I think this one's gonna win with my current stat. That was boldness? Space, exploring the vastness of the universe? Darling, I can barely handle the vastness of my everyday life. She does have a point. It is often difficult to feel entirely at ease here with so much going on. For everyone else, I assume I, of course, only need ask my serfs to complete menial tasks for me. You know, it turns out you can deprive serfs of many things. Money, family, happiness, most of their skin, but not air. Believe me, I know from experience. Space is clearly not a nice thing if it can't support regular servitude and slavery. Yeah, space sucks! Boo! You know what else sucks? You! You lose two smarts and one charm. Damn. On the way there, you run into Mam Mamimi the Oni Girl. She offers you some of her weird Japanese energy drink. You take a sip. It tastes crazy as hell. You need to check the contents of this shit. Corona seed extract, benzoic acid, 50 milligrams caffeine, and 100 milligrams of boldness. Well, it wasn't bad at all. Many people go to the bathroom to fulfill a very basic biological need. Euphemized, in fact, as going to the bathroom. But when you go, you're immediately greeted by the hullabaloo that can only come from the clamoring of many armored mer people. This goddamn school. Wow, to Miranda Vanderbilt. Here, here, my judgment is final. The sentence is death to be carried out immediately by my most trusted executioner, Zethra. In in the bathroom? Really, girl? Miranda's sitting on what should, again, euphemistically be a, called a porcelain throne, but which has been turned into a quite literal throne, adorned with golden jewels and dolphin skulls. In what was the next stall before the walls were knocked down, a bare-chested mass executioner holds the prisoner aloft. It's a goldfish in a plastic bag that they're about to flush down the toilet. <laughs> Wait! cries the goldfish. Yes, any last words? Or gloves? I demand a trial by combat! cries the goldfish. Oh shoot, I hate it when they do that. I am royally obligated to royally oblige. Very well then, choose your champion. The goldfish switches his low fishy tail, and suddenly an enormous fishman with huge rippling muscles. Somehow, even though he still also has scales, it's all very confusing, but anyway he appears, and wields an enormous battle axe. As Ags Ramo Quadus the Terrible, horrible, full of bloodlust, never been defeated again. All my prisoners are so predictable. I could have you fight him, Zethra, but I'd hate to lose my best executioner. Oh no, she's not going to. There's Shark Headed Max the Axe. Or Madrigal the Murderous, or Whale Dick Wayland the Wanderer. But of course, there's only one champion worthy to fight the undefeated. Asgromal Quadus the Terrible, Horrible Fool of Bloodlust, never been defeated. And that's Amira, the Nightmare from the Surface, Breather of Air. Yep, me. Don't worry, just because Asgromal Quadus the Terrible has killed literally every single champion he's ever come up against doesn't mean he's going to kill you. God damn it. 
Now you can't even piss without the threat of being ripped limb from limb by a fish. Better find a way to turn this around so you can survive, and more importantly, impress Miranda. Point out to him that that you're all above water so he can't breathe. The goldfish said trial by combat. He didn't say what kind. Challenge him to combat you in the popular video game of battling pocket humans, Pokemon. This seems like the smarts one. This one's probably creativity. Yes. Damn, I forgot to say trial by combat, where in combat is defined as two people brutally beating each other until one party is either unconscious or dead. Next time I'm facing execution, I'm probably gonna get a lawyer. I don't think there's gonna be a next time. Don't be a silly billy, you know lawyers are illegal for the accused. As are video games for peasants under my wonderful family's beautiful, silly, authoritarian, and fun regime. So, good luck as... as Romo Quadus. Doesn't matter how much luck he has, you have an entire lifetime playing the pocket human video games. Instead of going on dates or interacting with other monsters your own age. Oh god, wait. Actually, this is kind of pathetic now that you think about it. But no matter, for now is the moment in which your total lack of sexual conquest might inadvertently lead to a sexual conquest. Miranda watches intently as you and... And what's-his-face take your positions and prepare to see who can capture the most Pokemon and battle businessmen against waiters, against actors, to see who will be the ultimate pocket human trainer. It's you. Like, so clearly you. Even if Ags Remo Quadis weren't at a huge disadvantage due to having never played a video game before. Come on, the dude has fins. He doesn't even have fingers. You destroy him quite easily, becoming the very best pocket human trainer, like no one ever was. Oh look, it would appear your champion has been defeated, you tax evading scum. Now prepare to meet your maker. Wait, tax evasion? Miranda's executing a citizen for tax evasion? Damn, that bitch is cold. And you're super into it. Any last words? You may be able to flush me down the toilet, says the goldfish bravely, but you'll never be able to take away the likelihood that I could live in the sewers and mutate into something far greater than I am now and return to fight Amir, the nightmare from the surface, breather of air. My own self. A risk I am most certainly willing to take. After all, Amir just proved herself to be my greatest, bravest, beautifulest champion ever. Whoever said it would... Whoever would have thought that you could win my heart... At least the piece of it that really wanted to see this goldfish dead. Simply by spending all of your time on such a frivolous childhood pastime, far past the age where it's socially acceptable. Oh my gods. Who indeed? And yet here we are. With you having earned plus two fun, plus one charm, and one piece of Miranda's murderous heart. Bless. Oh jeez, that, that segment was a mouthful. down Zoe and Miranda. Miranda's paying too much attention to her eating serves, and Zoe's paying too much attention to them. Or Miranda's paying no attention to eating serves. Zoe's paying too much attention to them. <gasps> what are you doing, Zoe? Don't you know how rude it is to ogle another woman's eating serves? I'm not ogling, I'm researching for my fanfic. My dear, when it is about royalty, it is not called fanfic. It is called propaganda. <laughs> What? Oh, I'm not writing about you right now. I'm writing about your eating serves. <sighs> what? Yeah, it's gonna be great. I'm gonna really dive into their inner lives, their hopes, dreams, and desires. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. Serfs don't have any of those things. Do they, serfs? The eating serfs eyes dart between Miranda and Zoe. Terrified. Should they speak or just shut up and eat? You're right. Most serfs don't have thoughts or feelings, only the really inexpensive and rare ones do. Make menacing eye contact with the two serfs. Silently place a piece of sushi in your mouth and chew violently. Ooh, which one? Oh, that was... That was Zo That was Zoe's? Oh. I completely fucked this this run up, didn't I? 
Oh, I'm sorry, Miranda. I didn't realize your serfs were common and inexpensive. I won't ask them any questions. <gasps> wait, wait, of course my serfs are expensive and rare. They're the most expensive and the most rare. So you're saying they do have rich inner lives? Rich? Why, their inner lives are positively wealthy. Opulent, even. Tell them, serfs. At Miranda's urging, her serfs share with you their childhood dreams of becoming marine biologists, their mutual love of ukulele music, and their well-reasoned opinions on income inequality. Spoiler alert, you rock! Wow, thanks, thanks you two. This really is a wealth of information. Of course it is. Once again, it looks like lying was the answer. Zoe's certainly grateful. That day you spent some time in the library's PCs, playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision, but who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. Plus two money. You see Miranda hovering in the hallway whistling to herself, and checking out her reflection in her own scales. Why hello there! How funny and random to see you here entirely by coincidence, near your locker. Seeing as how we've gotten on so well lately, I have decided to afford you the honor of, and privilege of taking me to the seahorse races. You can pick me up after school today and bring me an assortment of flowers and chocolates as a gift. You're welcome. Well, okay. Oh, oh man, a chance to buy shit for Miranda and take her out on an outing that you have no interest in? Sounds amazing, let's rock! Hey. Hey, we got a date with her, so... No whining. Go to the horse races and look for Miranda. She's wearing a beautiful and intricate horse race hat. Unfortunately, a sudden gust blows the hat away. You could swear that you could hear the wind whispering, Not enough budget! But it surely must have been your imagination. No, my hat! Hey, Amira, I'm here. Hi, look at this. Daddy always gives me money when I go to the seahorse races. It isn't much, of course, only only three million money, but it should still make things more fun to bet. Of course, nothing would sour this lovely date faster than picking a losing horse. So I'll put this daunting choice entirely on you. Oh, great. Great. How should we choose the winning seahorse if this day goes down in memory as a pleasurable experience rather than a sign that we should never speak again? No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> But no worries, you know the perfect method for choosing winning race seahorses. The only way to tell is by its taste. Why watch people ride seahorses when you can be riding me? Oh ho ho! No, literally though, give me a saddle and let's enter the race. By taste? Yes, of course. Daddy always says I have excellent taste in things, and I pay my servants to agree. So why should I have anything less than great taste in tasting horses? Let's go. You and Miranda sneak down to the stables where the great seahorses are kept, and proceed to lick every last one. Oh, mostly excellent Romanian sapphire. Tastes a little like strawberries and cream and sunshine. Yuck! Grand Slam Pre 4000 tastes like dirt. Definitely not a winner. My goodness! Little Perfect Pixie Sunburst Jumbotron tastes just like rotten fish, a true delicacy in my kingdom. Ew. This will be the winning seahorse, I am certain of it. You and Miranda put all of your combined 3 million and 1 money down and hurry back to your seats. The race is beyond exciting, nearly too close to tell. Bubbles everywhere, waves crashing, mer jockeys mer jockeying for position. Until finally... Yes! Little... Little Perfect Pixie Sunburst Jumbotron has won the race! Huzzah! Truly, you have spectacular taste in women, and seahorses as well, it would seem. I eagerly await further gifts with your winnings from today's event. I would describe this date as certainly pleasant and absolutely consider you a viable suitor. You may kiss my hand. Wow, for Miranda, that's like third base. Yes! You gain two money and one charm. Okay, but was that enough? Let's do it. 
do this! Finally, pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Yuck! Eek, my sister told me I could get, get diseases if I dated commoners. God damn it. Stuff like crabs or poverty. I must decline. Disgusting! Aww. Some nights alone in your bed, you wish sadness was an STD because at least then you wouldn't be getting so much of it. Oh boy. I think that a lot of that had to... I, I was starting with Scott's route, and then somehow I got put on to Miranda's route. And so I didn't really get enough, um... I wasn't able to get enough affection points with her. Anyways, that's gonna do it for now. Hope you're enjoying still. I'll see you guys next time. I'm playing a game!